Okay, so a solution to this. Okay, a uh, question came up earlier about switchgrass and this campus. Uh, there's a lot of interest on the U of I campus. We have an energy biofuels institute now. Uh, a lot of money going into that, a lot of very smart people studying sort of the mechanics of producing ethanol from different types of crops and whatnot. Um, but I, I would actually like to offer that um, things like switchgrass and things like this campus might actually be potentially um, alleviating to this problem of loss of CRP. And it's not as going to be as bad as some options. It's not going to be as bad as people might think at first blush. And the reason for that is, is that switchgrass is actually a native grass, okay? And miscanthus isn't. Miscanthus, miscanthus is originally from, I believe, from Southeast Asia, okay? So I'm not positive about, um, well, I'm positive, we can't call that native. But uh, there are some issues, or there, are, there is a reason to think that something like switchgrass from this canvas might actually be beneficial for grassland wildlife. Because at least it's going to keep the landscape under grass. At least it's going to put grass on the landscape. Okay? And that's really important. And um, the value of these crops relative to native grassland ecosystem really does merit study. And the question that came up earlier is it really does merit study. There's been a reasonable amount of research on uh, grassland bird communities and switchgrass, and they do pretty well. The big key is when mowing and when harvesting birds. They can hold off till the end of July and not, do, not get any kind of machinery in there and whatnot, then that works out pretty well, okay, because the birds are done breeding. But when you see, and, and that's true for just about any situation, when you see, I, I live in Pyatt County, and when in June, when they're mowing on the roadsides in early July, it just drives me crazy because that's when all, there's lots of bird's nests in what they're mowing there, and it just destroys them all, okay. So there's a lot of things, a lot of just common sense things about, okay, when are they going to harvest them, whatnot. This canvas, from what I'm told, may not be harvested until the winter, so they may not do any summer mowing. It may actually work out pretty well, but you really don't know a lot about what's going on in terms of uh, what these alternative crops may mean and what the implications may mean for biodiversity. But I think it's potentially <coughs> helpful. And it's this canvas, this canvas is harvested in the winter. In the winter, right. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, they're just growing it in the field there. They're just growing it in the in the summer, um, then, you know, it may offer good habitat. But we actually don't know very much about what's going on with miscanthus and bird populations. The only data on that are from England. They've been using miscanthus in England for a while. And it appears to actually be not as um, uh, detrimental as some other crops that are, that are uh, planted. And I can tell you with confidence that, um, with all due respect to um, soybean farmers and corn farmers, Nothing is worse habitat than a cornfield or a soybean field for breeding birds. Nothing. Okay, other than Kmart parking lot. Not to pick on Kmart. Although killdeers do pretty well at Kmart parking lot. So. Okay, so I, I think you know I want to end on kind of a positive note here that the situation is grim for a lot of components of biodiversity, but I think that we can perhaps take advantage of that. That's a bobolink, by the way, one of the nicer. Um, grassland birds that breed in Illinois. I think we could potentially take advantage of the situation and with a little bit of thoughtfulness, uh, figure out that there may be some ways to get biofuels produced and there may be ways of having those biofuels offer good habitat for breeding birds. And we need to do a lot of work on this. There's some interest on the campus for doing this kind of work. There's some interest from the state for doing this kind of work. Um, talk is cheap, research is expensive, all that. But I think there's a lot of goodwill in at least exploring this seeing what it may offer. And there's lots of uh, um, arguments for, for to do this. Uh, birds eat insects, insects eat the plants. If the birds are eating the insects, there's more bio, as well as biomass produced. Uh, biological control of insect pests and whatnot uh, with bird populations has actually uh, been looked at quite a bit in other types of ecosystems. So rule number one is I think that we should factor biodiversity into the equation when evaluating the sustainability of production systems. Um, you, often when people are talking about sustainability of a certain crop or sustainability of a certain practice, what that means is the sustainability in terms of ec the economics of it. Um, they really don't, and, and sort of the energy, maybe the energy aspects of it, they really don't talk about it in terms of factoring in the benefits or the detriments to biodiversity as something that should go into the equation. And I'm a little biased, but I think that that should be factored in. 
And uh, I have 10 rules here, but I'll go over them quickly. Um, rules number two or 10 are just to obey rule number one, okay? <laughs> because I think that's really, really important. And um, so, I don't know how I'm doing on time here, but uh, thank you for your attention. I enjoyed giving this talk, and I'm happy to, I guess we have a discussion for a few minutes uh, following yeah, we, this. We have until about 9.50, so about uh, nine minutes. Nine minutes, okay. Yeah.